They'll be better off without me. I was almost sure of it 11 years ago. Raise your hand if unmanaged ADHD symptoms are ruining your life. I'm Coach Bruce, and I'm a life coach for ADHD parents, and I am going to get really, really, really real with you today and get deep into my story and how ADHD almost had me end my story there at 11 years ago. So un unmanaged ADHD is affecting every portion of your life. If you don't realize that, are you actually paying attention to what's going on in your life? We are, you know, accustomed to an attention deficit after all. So you probably don't drink enough water, eat regular meals, eat real food, have time to work out and care for your body the way that you should. You're not interacting with your faith or spirituality on a regular basis, and you're making excuses to yourself why these things that are really important to you, it's just okay for you to just miss out on them because you're not managing your schedule. You have no balance in your relationships. You're not setting proper boundaries. Your conversation with your spouse or your um, close friends are transactional. You don't even make an attempt to be attractive to your spouse anymore. You may as go as far as I did and be looking for attention somewhere else. It's just a distraction. Your kids are suffering too because the majority of your conversations with them are having them be ordered around to uh, to make up for the overwhelm that's going on in your mind. You want them to um, accommodate your lower threshold for audio, organizational, or visual stimuli. It is not your family's job to continually accommodate your shortcomings. There's a big difference between supporting and caring. To go even further, you have no passion, enthusiasm, or motivation for whatever work you're doing, and you just do it because it's just what you do. Does that sound familiar? So I'm ADHD, and I know that it's okay to ask to be held to a different standard than neurotypicals. Absolutely. I 100% agree that we should not be held to the neurotypical standard, but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be held to a standard. There has to be some bar set in which you have to perform to some degree. ADHD is not a get out of jail free card in which you can do whatever you want for the rest of your life. I can tell you for an exact, for an exact fact, trying to do so will put you in a bad, bad way. Let's talk about it. Let's story time. 2013, me, I'm a 28 year old married father of two, and I have no idea that Coach Bruce was anywhere inside of me. I was so disconnected from anything that looked like having any sort of purpose in my life. I worked at a restaurant because they hired me. I worked around 50 hours a week. I was late to multiple shifts a week. I talked to my wife at meals and while I watched TV or played video games. I played with my two kids when she nagged me, meaning asked me to be a father. And I thought that was nagging because it was too much for me to engage with the kids that I created. And I thought that that was okay. I played golf for six hours a week because I needed to escape from life. I needed, I needed a break from doing pretty much nothing besides working, which I actually enjoyed most of the time, had fun because once again, I was escaping. On top of that, I played game, video games almost every night. I had multiple must-see, must-see TV shows every week, and I watched multiple movies every week. My responsibilities that I accepted around the house, none. Responsibilities to the kids I accepted, none. Responsibilities to my spouse I accepted, none. And let's not forget that I would also sneak out to the garage where I kept a stash of booze to get buzzed under the radar multiple times a week. I would order drinks for myself at work for tables, and then I would sneak back to the bus station and knock them back. I was self-medicating with prescription pain pills and, ben and benzos. I was staying late at work to flirt with the hostess multiple times a week. This would, in fact, turn into an affair later down the road. I was doing the bare minimum to get by at work. Aspirations? None. Hope? None. Plan? None. Identity? None. Future? Surprise? None. Let's talk about the future. I can I contemplated more times than I am a proud of, sorry I contemplated more times than I'm proud to admit that I didn't care if I even had one. Remind you, I had two kids. Shortly thereafter, I'd have three on the way, and I was married to my very loving wife, who I do not deserve, 
and I didn't care if I if I went on living. I did not care because I didn't know what I was alive for. And I didn't care to find out. So I thought that my family would just be better off with me removed from the equation. I was just causing more drag on any future that my kids had, that my wife had, because all I was was sucking up oxygen and costing money every day. Sure, I did go and make some, but not enough to to live more than paycheck to paycheck. So I was not happy with what I was doing at all. And I wasn't willing to do anything about it either. So how did I get from rock bottom, scum of the earth, piece of shit husband and father, drunk delinquent, pill popper, philanderer, to a loved and respected leader of my household, a trusted friend and advisor, a business owner and life coach? How did that happen? Well, I became this this person after the old version of me hit rock bottom and shattered. I climbed out, and then I fell even further and shattered again. Climbed again and dropped down rung after rung multiple times until I learned the lesson that God was trying to teach me. As long as you let the world define who you are, you will never have any control of where you're going. <laughs> Surprise! If you don't drive, you can't control the destination. That's pretty wild. I'm ADHD. I am on the spectrum. I am unstoppable because I finally accepted that no one is going to do this life for me. There's no one coming to save me. Everyone I had previously let in the driver's seat of my life totaled me, jumped out of the car, left me in the ditch, didn't even call the ambulance or the tow truck, for instance, to come help me get repaired. They were they were out. Vominos. They did not give a shit that I was laying there at the bottom of the barrel with no one to help. It was time for me to take control and I had to go through so much failure, embarrassment, and disgusting behavior to realize how fucked up I was. I don't want that for anybody else. Let me tell you, it's not the way to find out that there's a better way to live. So I want to tell you that overcoming ADHD to achieve more, to set a new standard for yourself is easy. Well, it's not easy, but it's simple. It does take some work, but it is simple. If you can do it without a life altering, or sorry, without a life altering reality shattering event, then I think that that's much better. For me, that's what it took. And I am trying to get out here and tell people that it's coming for you if you are not prepared. Let's talk about why it's coming for you. None of this happened to me because I have ADHD. That's, that's not why it happened. It was because I made one allowance at a time. I had no plan in place. And I, I don't know why I was surprised to find myself without direction. I didn't have a plan, so there was no direction. <clears throat> I finally woke up after the most disgusting night of my life, aka my first rock bottom. Now, sorry, this didn't happen because I didn't have a, or this didn't happen because I have ADHD. It's because I didn't manage my ADHD. I knew I'd been diagnosed for over ten years at this point in my life. I've been taking medication for at least eight of those years consistently. But I had never started managing my ADHD. Taking medication and managing your ADHD are two different things. Taking medication is a piece of managing your ADHD, but it is not the end game. It's just the beginning. There is still more work to do, and you have to understand what you want for your life to start to realize that the, the, what the work looks like. So, anyways, so... Other parts of managing your ADHD include having a plan, um, having an identity, having a core foundation of values and beliefs that are slowing the acceleration to the bottom of the barrel, to the deep, dark descent that I had because I had no stop caps. I had nothing to help backstop me whenever I started to fall super hard. And with a little bit of forethought and planning, you can avoid what happened to me. And if you're listening to this thinking like, I mean, maybe, but I would never, I would never do that. So did I. I thought I would never cheat. I thought I would never do drugs. I thought I was going to be the super successful person and I was going to have all my shit together 
for my entire life. As I just told you, that is not how the story went. And it's not because the person who graduated at the top of his class in high school had all the prospects in the entire world is a different person than I was whenever I was, you know, falling down drunk in bars and throwing up on myself in public is different from the person that I am today whenever I have direction, purpose, and a plan to succeed in life. They're all the same person. But the effort put forth in actually directing the potential somewhere is completely different. And if you're not doing anything to protect yourself from the burnout and the, of these three combined things, they are coming to fuck up your life. They, it's, they're coming. So here's what they are. So you can start to prepare yourself. The burnout from pretending that you aren't struggling to keep up with the neurotypical lifestyle, that, that masking game that most of us are conditioned to do without even thinking of it. It's just, it feels natural, but it's not, it's not real. It's lying. And your body is keeping score. That's a book. But at this point, it is. It is. It's keeping score. And every time that you show up to work and pretend like you are normal and that all of this feels right to you whenever it doesn't, and you are working two times as hard to get half as far, it is wearing on you. It is wearing on your mind, body, and psyche. Anyways, two, engaging in escapism to distract yourself from the life that you are not engaged in and or passionate about. Playing on your phone all the time, doing like I did, playing little flirting games that was super innocent to start out with. They didn't stay innocent because when you were distracting yourself because you don't know what's important, you don't know where the line is. You have no idea. There's no line. And before you know it, you were sucked into doing something that you never would have thought that you did because you didn't define what was important to you at your core. And lastly, a decision-making system that you are running on emotion, sorry, running from emotional lows and chasing emotional highs. If you have those three things in place, I'm sorry, not in place. Those are the three things. Those are your reality. Get ready. It's fucking coming. Your shit's about to blow up. I know from personal experience, I am telling you mine blew up over and over and over again before I was finally able to see that there is a better way to live. I didn't listen to anybody who tried to tell me, but none of them were telling me from a neurodivergent standpoint. Nobody talked like that. Nobody talked to, to people like me. Nobody talked about parents who were ADHD and had to deal with a different set of stresses, obstacles, um, frameworks. Everything is different because we do have a disability that starts us off in a different place doesn't mean that we have an impossible situation that we can never overcome. We don't. But if you pretend like it doesn't exist and you are trying to run the game like the neurotypicals are, you're fucked. <clears throat> so unless you do something about it, do not let the overwhelming paralysis stop you from doing something. Make a move in the right direction. Any move in the right direction. It's never too late to start. It's never too small to take a step. Do something. Build on that something. Get confidence. Don't wait until your life gets demolished before you start to build a life that you're excited about and that you're passionate to be engaged in. One that is based in or working to support what you actually want in life. What you actually want in life. Not what you were told to want in life. Not what you've pretended to want in life. What you actually want in life. That is possible. You don't have to settle for what everybody else tells you is okay. The life you want is out there and you can get it. You just have to be willing to work one step at a time. One, a life where you nurture the relationships that matter to you, where your kids look at you with admiration and trust. Your spouse is attracted to your drive and your direction. You spend time wisely on the things that move the needle on your goals, like working out or engaging in healthy hobbies. And no, this is not an invitation to just be a neurotypical and buy a planner. That is not going to solve your solve all of your issues. A planner might help. It might even get you on track for a little while. But if you are not making a a fundamental change in the way that you live, you are not going to survive the burnout that's coming 
the escapism that you're going to use to distract yourself and those the decision making system of running from emotional highs I'm sorry running towards emotional highs and running from emotional lows they will come for you if you don't have a solid plan and system in place to avoid that <clears throat> so the first thing you have to do the first thing that you have to do is believe that is the first step if you can believe that there is a better life for you if you can believe that there is a way for ADHD parents to get off the sticky pad of the dirty restaurant floor that is life and start to succeed despite what your disability is, then you have made the biggest step. You are over halfway to achieving a completely different life. The mindset shift is where it begins. You have to believe, for one, that you deserve more because you do. And for two, that you can get more because you can. This is not an impossible ask. This is not crazy. I am not out of my mind. I am ADHD. I am autistic. And I have found that there is a better life with just a little bit of preparation, a little bit of focus, and a little bit of work. It's not crazy. I'm not the most successful person in the world. I am not the richest or um, wealthiest, but I have a life where I am a respected member of my family. We all love each other and have great conversation. We understand what, what we want out of our lives and we work together to get there. And that to me is amazing. 10 years ago, I never thought that was possible. Nobody ever said to me that was something I could do. I'm telling you that you can have that. You can have work fire you up and be passionate about it, even if the job that you are doing right now isn't what you love. If you have the right framework going into that job, you can still be fired up and passionate about it. So after you leave behind that limiting, that limiting belief and you open your mind to the possibility of your life being more, then I ask you to do one simple thing. Click the link in my bio. Take the ADHD burnout, aimless life assessment, and that's all I ask. Just take the assessment. See where you're at. See if this life that I was talking about is, if you're on the path that I was, that almost led me to a dead-end life that was literally dead in the end. The, the assessment will line it all out for you. If you take it and your score is high, then you're on that path, whether you realize it or not. You are on that path, and because you're not paying attention, it is going to sneak up on you, and it is going to really jack your life up. Hopefully, it won't leave you dead, but hopefully, it won't leave you in a position where you have to see as much pain and suffering as I had to to finally listen to the message. If you are waiting for a sign, here it is. It's time to straighten up and start doing something different. It's time. So click the link in my bio. Click the link below in the description. Go take the assessment and see if you were on the path, and we'll take it from there. Until then, be yourself and love yourself. I will talk to you next time.